Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah, yeah. You hate to see it. It's a day. I hate to see it on a Friday. Wait, but... so why wasn't it playing the last two days? Maybe I it we doesn't. Were maybe it doesn't work Wednesday, Thursdays. God damn it, God. <laughs> this is Run It Back, and it happens to be on FanDuel TV. Michelle Beadle, Chandler Parsons, and our two esteemed co-hosts joining us from abroad, Lou Williams and Sham Sharania. Look at you guys! Woohoo! How's everybody feeling? <laughs> Why you keep saying abroad? I'm in my basement. <laughs> Dude, you're at Magic City. You're you far away, that? and that's all I need to know about it. Shams, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Bonjour. Any shout outs you'd oh, like to bonjour, give? Oh, bonjour. Bonjour. What is it, the Olympics? <laughs> Shams um, <is> funny. <laughs> we gotta, we're starting the show off a little differently show. today. Why? Because there's a lot going on. Scoops right off the top of the show. Doesn't happen all the time, and it needs to today because number one, Frank Vogel. Let's start there, Shams. He gone. What happened? We've been talking about it really since the Phoenix Suns season ended, that Frank Vogel, the, he was on the hot seat. They were con they've been considering firing him, and they finally made that decision clear yesterday. They announced that they have fired Frank Vogel as head coach, and the fit was never right as the year went on. There were issues. The players essentially lost trust in Frank Vogel, and whether it was the offense versus defense, just was not a fit. Frank Vogel, obviously a defensive-minded coach, and he was never able to fully maximize Dev Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal. So now I'm told that the plan is for the Suns to hire 2021 Bucks championship head coach Mike Budenholzer as their new head coach. Uh, really in the next few days, I expect the sides to hammer out a deal. I'm told the deal is expected to approach the eight figures uh, per year range. And there could be some front office changes as well. James Jones is going to stay in his position. Uh, but I'm told there are discussions for David Fisdale to move from the lead assistant role oh, yeah. in that Suns organization to a new potential front office role. And so the, they view Mike Budenholzer as a, as a clear choice that, that can really come in there and optimize those three guys. That, that's really where this all hinges at is the big three being fully maximized and utilized the right way offensively. They were never able to find cohesion with Bradley Beal or Devin Booker playing point guard. How does the ball find Kevin Durant in his spot? So there will be roster adjustments as well. The Suns have two first-round draft picks. They can trade on draft night. I expect them to be aggressive as they try to tweak the roster as well. You know, this whole coaching thing, it feels like that one friend who's going through partners like left and right, and every time they're like, this is the one, and you're like, no, it's not. This is what it feels like. Like, we're just now recycling. What, what yeah, are we doing? It's, I've said this since I got in the media. I think the coaching job is such a such a hoax, such Ugh. a cesspool. It, it makes no sense. Like, this guy, he just signed a five-year, $31 million deal, and now they're basically going to do the same thing for another guy that Good was for him. just fired by Milwaukee. Like, it, it's just it's just an Still ongoing... Still being paid by Milwaukee. Hamster. Yeah, it's, it's, it makes no sense. And was Frank Vogel the best coach I've ever seen? No. Like, could he have done some different rotations and some different looks and offensive sets and and Sean says a defensive coach they're ranked 13th in the NBA in, in defense this year so it didn't work but also this is a pretty small sample size of what we could have for this big three it's like usually stuff takes time and when you put Kevin Durant Devin Booker Bradley Beal a lot of people think oh they're so good you can just throw the ball out there and it's going to work it takes time look at Kyrie and Luca last year I always go back to that they were awful mm -hmm. last year people were thinking what a bad move why they do this Kyrie's still saying outrageous shit now this <laughs> year now they're back and they had a great year and their chemistry has developed we always talk about the Suns this year they never had a point guard they never had a setup guy so now you take two of the best shooting guards in the NBA and Bradley Beal and Devin Booker and take them out of position and make them play point guard that's not Frank Vogel's fault. That's the front office's fault. They didn't sign the point guard, not Frank Vogel. So I think coaches always get kind of a raw end of the deal. But also, I think he didn't do the best of job with what he had. Because that's a, that, I don't care how bad of a job. Like, that's a good job. You have that much Great talent. Job. I'm taking that job with that much talent. But when it doesn't work out, there's always a fall guy. And it happens to be Frank, I mean, look, Vogel, it's not, Frank Vogel again. It's not my money. But good for them. We get to keep yeah, getting paid. But yeah, but go go on vacation. Don't work. You got 25 or 24, whatever million more coming for the next four years to do nothing. American dream. We don't feel bad. Um, but here's my question to everyone here. So LeBron and KD now, since 2018, the finals of 2018, have gone through 10 combined head coaches. So I know I kind of said it That's yesterday. Crazy. Kind of in jest, but not really. Can we not just bring back player coaches? Because you're going to ultimately fire whoever you're bringing in anyways, right? Like, we all, can we agree? Yeah, well, usually when there's yeah. a fall I mean, guy, it's, it's, the, it's the coach. 
Go right? Ahead, yeah, they top, they top guys, man. It's a hard job to have when you're coaching the league's best, right? Every year that they have these expectations of championships a bust. Every single season you're going to coach LeBron James. Every year you're going to coach Kevin Durant. That's the, that's the, the emphasis of the job. You got to get it done or you got to get out of there. Unfortunately, it's, it's almost like a career killer like Chandler mentioned days ago. Anytime you coach one of those two guys, either you're up for the challenge, you understand what's at stake, or you're not. You're going to get fired. Simple as that. Yeah, that's what worries me about like a JJ Redick taking this Lakers job. It's like if you, if you don't win it in two years, that's like, his, and that's a bad job. When you look like it's, it's, every team is so good ahead of them. Every team is really good behind them. You look at the Lakers right now. Look at the Rockets, the Grizzlies, the, the Spurs. They're right on their ass too. So like you go JJ Redick there for two years, maybe three years, and you're five, You're probably not going to get another head coaching job. So that's why these teams keep doing it because they've seen Bud do it. They've seen Doc Rivers do it. If the Pistons fire Monty Williams, he'll get another look just because of his resume and his history and just the trust that he's been right. doing it for years, even though other teams have already fired him for failing. So What a world. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It never will make sense to me. So but then player coaches, yes? I mean, why, why can't LeBron just be the coach of the Lakers? In but title? like even, even those coaches have had their adversity. Bud has had his adversity in Atlanta. Yep. Um, got got had some adversity in, in in Milwaukee after after winning the championship. You know, same goes for Doc Rivers, man. When when it comes to these coaches, you gotta get some. Let's get some fresh blood in there. Let's get some new some new assistant coaches an opportunity to have a voice and to build and, and move in a new direction. I'm not I'm not against any of these veteran guy veteran coaches getting the opportunity to have more more cracks at being head coaches. But you know, it's just over and over and over the same coaches, the same rotation. They're gonna get fired. They're gonna get the job of somebody else. Get fired. Bring some new blood and, in. Give us some give us some fresh look some at, fresh opportunity. Look across the league right now. You look at Mark. Dagna, assistant, worked his way up. Exactly. Great job. Jamal Mosley, assistant. Chris Finch, assistant. JB Bickerstaff, assistant. Like there's these coaches. Charlie, I like the hire now in Charlotte with Charlie Lee or uh, Charles Lee. That that makes sense to me because I mean, Budenholzer did that though. These guys, but yeah, but he's already peaked. He's already done it. He's uh, already went to the top. He's been fired. Uh, like like it, I feel like I guess I understand the opportunity of a different team and a different like culture of, of what teams are trying to do. Like Charlotte makes sense to hire a new young guy I because agree. no old coach, no Bud's not taking that job. Why would he? It's a rebuild. That's fair. But my point is, you can see the the growth. You know, how players need chemistries and teammates need chemistry. So does co so do coaches. So do co assistant coaches. So when you have a core staff and players together, you can see that chemistry develop way quicker than these teams that just funnel in and out two, three years, different, different, different. You got to have consistency. And that starts with hiring one of these younger coaches that have been through the hoops, the ranks of the assistant jobs. It's just crazy. These teams that we're talking about doing this is like Suns with those three, the Lakers over and over again. Like it's just, it looks so unstable from the outside looking in and it shouldn't be. Um, moving on to some more scoops, Shams. We got Knicks Pacers tonight from Indiana this time. I'm, but no OG. What's the latest? Left hamstring strain for OG on Anobi. He was diagnosed with that yesterday, and his status is very shaky. Game four and game five beyond that. This can be a week-to-week -week injury. I mean, obviously Chandler Liu have been around hamstring strains and things like that. When a guy pulls it the way OG on Anobi pulled it the other night, um, he, he really came off the court. Um, you could tell he was really laboring. And so now they're without OG on Anobi, Julius Randle, Boyan Bogdanovich, a lot more 48-minute nights for Josh Hart, potentially Dante DiVincenzo, and the rest of that Knicks core like, of, of Villanova guys. Well, they were going to play 48 minutes whether OG was <laughs> in or out. Regardless. That's true, but this, this is just this tough. Is like, what on. else could happen to this team? And again, we're thinking big picture. I think they've already had such a great year. People already are thinking, okay, the Knicks are back. Jalen Brunson start. And this is without two of their main guys, and now without probably three of their main guys. So. They've had a great season. I think they're obvious. I think they'll still find a way to kind of get through the Pacers. Okay. The season is far from over, and this game tonight will be huge. Um, but OG's versatility, the what he brings on that defensive end, that trade alone just made them so much better just because of, just because of fit. Nothing against Quigley, nothing against RJ Barrett, but OG just fits with Jalen. The way he the way he can play offense, post the post up, switch on defensive end. He they don't have someone that can replicate what he does. So now if Tibbs still doesn't go to the bench, if Shake Milton or Alec Burks don't play tonight, I don't know. What about Jericho Sims? Any, anybody. Everybody. They have to go to this bench tonight. Everyone should play tonight. They have to. It's going to be a true test tonight, man. It's going to be a true test with so many guys out and having a little, little adversity and headed to in Indiana for these next two games. Because, oh, uh, listen, OG is going to be out the next two games. Based on scheduling, mm -hmm. he's not going to be able to shake off a hamstring in the next seven days and be ready to go. So... 
You know, this thing can get rocky for the New York Knicks really fast. This is going to be a true test for them in these next couple games. Alec Burks plays, and he has double-digit scoring tonight. So here's what I'm thinking, and I'm glad you brought that up, because we Hell saw no. it last night with the Mavericks. Hardaway <laughs> just played. Throw, just throw that Book up. It. Well, yeah, no, I... We should bet that. That's your, prop, that's your prop party right there? I'm with yeah, Chandler. Yeah, the odds are going to be good. He's going to score. He's going to score, score 10-plus points. He's going to come gonna in play. and have a night. Yes. Because Hardaway hadn't been playing in that series, and look what he did last night. Buddy right. Heald hadn't been playing in that series, and he came in and had a, a night. I'm with Chandler. Boom, Lou. We want your money. Ten grand. That's history, yes? by the no, way. No, it's Me not. A, it, it has. It has nothing to do with Alec Burke. It's just the fact that it's. It's hard to throw a guy in there game three of the uh, of happening. the playoffs that hasn't had an opportunity to play, and you tell him to go out there and make a major impact. That's what dreams are made of. That's what players <laughs> really want to look. They look forward to that to have an opportunity to do that. I just think it's unrealistic. So I'm well. I'm not with y'all this time. I would have loved to have been on a bandwagon with y'all, but not this time. Not <laughs> We've been on in the studio uh, alone yeah. together, and it's not, it's not good for us. Um, Josh Hart asked about it. I can, I can imagine. Head <laughs> of the game tonight. Here's Hart. I'm playing 48 anyways, dog. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, ain't shit change. <laughs> I mean, he's like, he's, yeah. nothing can get different he, he, he for him. He didn't look excited. Like, <laughs> one thing doesn't, it's going to change for whatever, their bench, Shake Milton, Alec Burke. Yeah. Nothing is changing nothing. for Josh Hart tonight. Which Dante DiVincenzo, great. he's definitely going to play 48 yep, minutes. Yep. They're going to have to do different lineups where they're going to put people in uncomfortable situations. But again, they've had a day or so to prep for this. They do got to figure the OG was out. Um, and it's tough. And if anybody can do it, it's this team. Because, again, they're based on not who's playing because they're all going to play hard as shit. They're yep. still going to go on there on the road tonight. But this season is far from over. Pacers get this one. It gets dicey for the Knicks. That's fair. But they, they're playing with some magic stuff going on there. Uh, we had games last night. <laughs> kind of shocking results, quite frankly. Not this first one, though. Mavericks, Thunder, tied at one apiece. Now, Luka, big job in this one. 119, 110. He had 29, 10, and 7. Kyrie only had 9 and 11 assists. P.J. Washington with 29 points and 11 there. Uh, he was 7 of 11 from the three. SGA finished with 33, 12, and 8. This was a big one for Luka. Um, they distributed the ball. You saw the P.J. numbers right there. They combined for 38, 18 assists. And then everyone else was contributing, which is weird given the week and the narrative that we've heard coming out of the Dallas situation. So did that win last night do something for the Mavericks team confidence-wise moving forward? Well, for sure. You when you take home court back and you and you even up the series, I think winning game two is more important when you're going home than winning game mm -hmm. one. Now they have all the momentum. They're fresh off this win. Game one is just all just a distant memory. And now we're going home where we're a much better team and our crowd's going to be involved and it's going to be nuts in there. And this was a great game. It's crazy to think that Kyrie Irving took eight shots and, and their I offense know. was one of the better offensive movement games that they've had. P.J. Washington got hot early. He hits five threes, and that's all because of the attention that Kyrie gets, the way he can get in the paint, kick out, and he's getting wide open looks. So I think when you have a balanced attack like that, we always said Luka's usage rate's too high. When everybody gets involved, everyone's touching it and playing hot potato, that makes them contagious on the offensive end to, to play on selfish. That makes them more willing to play defense on the other end. They're getting out in transition because now they're defending and they're getting on the break. And they're getting wide open looks. This was a very, very good offensive night for the, uh, for the Mavs. And it's crazy because Ty Kyrie Irving, their second best player, sometimes first best player, took eight shots and they still got it done. And welcome back, Tim Hardaway Jr. Because there it is. this was a huge game for him, and they need him going forward with his shot making. If I'm a shooter, I want to play on the Dallas Mavericks because they have two ISO players that are going to get double teamed and trapped, and there's going to have a guys with a lot of open looks. And when they knock them down, as you see, they're hard to beat. But that was the narrative this week, was that the mm -hmm. rumblings were that guys don't like playing with Luka, and then we have a game like last night where it's like, oh, well, wait, this, this can work, Lou. It's kind of nice to have a night where yeah. Kyrie can have those numbers and still win. I think that's a gift, right? Yeah, you got to give you got to give Kyle a lot of credit. Uh, very selfless in how he approached the game last night. I was looking at the game and I'm thinking, okay, when is Kyrie gonna get going? And and I f I failed to even realize that P.J. Washington was cooking. <laughs> he was absolutely scoring the basketball at a high clip from the three point line, and that was Kyrie's adjustment. My guy got it going. Luca has it going. Tonight is my night to be that distributor. Tonight is my night to facilitate and make sure guys get the ball in the right spots and continue and help us get easy baskets instead of forcing up shots. Because a lot of times when you see superstars get off to a slow start like Kyrie did, even though he weren't he wasn't taking shots he was taking the back seat to Tim Hardaway PJ Washington and Luca Luca was fire high he went five for five before he missed his first shot his adjustment was you know what I'm gonna be point guard tonight and make sure the guys that are scoring the basketball have the basketball in their hands 
great, great adjustment. I think that worked. That worked for Dallas, and it threw OKC's game plan off a little bit with some of the things that they wanted to do. I'm sure they wanted to junk the game up, run and jump, get the ball out of Kyrie's hands, get the ball out of Luka's hands. It's hard to double a guy when he's passing this so so easily and so willingly, and other guys were benefiting from it, and Dallas had a good night. And I agree with Chandler. That second game is way more important when you're going home with that momentum to be in front of your home crowd for the next two games. So it just got a little rocky for OKC in this series. Does this, look, does this go seven? It feels like it could go seven. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Oh, I forgot who I was talking to. It does not go seven. Where I does got it go? It goes six. <laughs> <laughs> it goes six. I think Dallas gets it. Definitely one, maybe two at home, and I think they win it in six. Okay. Lou? I, th I think seven. I, I hope seven. Like seven. As a fan, I, like seven. Yeah, I, love, I, I think seven, seven is appropriate. All right, Lou and I agree on this one. Yeah, if you it's, think this OKC team is going away easy, mm -hmm. hell no. It's definitely hell, the best no. series. I think so, too. Also, it's the best series until Denver wins tonight. Then that series, that series also gets real. You think Denver wins tonight? Denver goes down 3-0 tonight. I agree. No. I'm with Lou. Look at this. By the way, we're just shifting. going completely off script. It's I got Alex, Bur Alex Burks <laughs> plus 10, <laughs> the Mavs in six. That's not part of the script. It's just something no, I feel. These are just throwing, side bets hey, we're giving you for free. We're throwing all logic out. Friday, I'll make Excited, I'm just throwing <laughs> shit out there. Shams, you're watching this game last night. What are you seeing? I, I'm giving a lot of credit to Nico Harrison, the general manager of the, of the Dallas Mavericks. He envisioned P.J. Washington to be their version of Aaron Gordon. And when I heard that around the trade deadline, obviously that's a curious projection. P.J. Washington's a guy that's been known as a scorer, mostly in Charlotte. But to see his defensive versatility, how he's able to impact the game on multiple levels against the Clippers, he was guarding Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, James Harden, and now the way he's able to just guard really anyone on that Thunder roster, um, 29 points, 11 rebounds, four assists, seven threes. He's the only player since, I mean, since Stephen Curry, he's the only player in 2022 to have uh, 10, 10 rebounds or more or seven threes or more. So uh, his performance to me was big time. <clears throat> I expect Kyrie Irving to step up, but him, Tim Hardaway, um, and Josh Green, the way that they're able to uh, chip in around Luka Doncic's big night, I think was impressive. I'm so proud of us for waiting to get to this point maturely and as the adults that we are. There was a moment during the press conference last night, very serious moment. Here it is. Uh, just our sharing the ball and our energy was great. What do you think? Uh, okay. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> I hope that's not life. <laughs> Ow. How was the game last night? That was, that was amazing. By the way, I hate Chandler, what was that? Do you know? Do, do we know? Do, oh, we, do we have sources in Oklahoma oh. City? So, Shams, when two people love each other, <laughs> yeah, so this is what happens. They get intimate, and you were hearing the side that effects. That was unbelievable. Of that. I don't. I think that's someone phone? playing it on their phone. Obviously, I don't but think. It's, why was it on their? I think phone? somebody somebody left the somebody left their last browser open, mm -hmm. and uh, the microphone was close by, oh. and uh, he's a creep. <laughs> or, or, oh, he? Or you think it's a he? Behind like that wall, was there actual uh, no. sexual activity going on? Because this is like a religious like place, oh, which no. makes it even better. They bone in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, well, well, clearly they do. I see children running around. Um, a lot. Has anything ever happened? I've watched that so many times since last night. I, I can't even describe it anymore at this point. Has anything ever happened that funny in a press conference to anyone here? <laughs> At, no. at all. That's hard Can't to beat. Be. That's, Can't, not to that level. No. Shams, <laughs> yeah. what would you do? Like, Shams, we need the scoop. Who, yeah, whose phone who's, was that? Who, who is was that? The, who was the woman? I need to know everything. Does she have Instagram? <laughs> what, I need to find out all details. I'm going to get on this. I'm going to get on <laughs> Does this. Does she ASAP. have Instagram? You're a pig. Uh, there was a lot of <laughs> chirping. Uh, that's good stuff. I love it. And, and by the way, shout out to Luca, who just handled it. I hope it. that's not live. He, he, he was perfect. He perfectly comedic timing. A <laughs> oh, um, lot going on between Kyrie, Luca, and OKC fans last night, the courtside guys. There's a Luca sucks chant. That was nice and loud in the second half. Kyrie's waving goodbye to folks right there. You see that in the fourth. Um, I mean, I love this. <laughs> But Where are you going? <laughs> he's having a full conversation, <laughs> isn't he?
This can't backfire, right? This no, is what he's supposed I love to do. It. And by the way, if you're engaging, if a player's engaging with a fan, yes. Lou knows this. Usually they say something either hilarious or something so offensive <laughs> that you feel like you have to clap back. For the most part, you ignore them. He clearly said something that got under Kyrie's skin or that it was just a banter all game long. And I like this. Game's over. You're talking shit. You're bye bye. You're going to be back here for game five. True. But I like it. And this is what, this is what makes it fun. Like, unless I love it. Listen, unless the guy is getting racial or super offensive where it's like, all right, like, kick him out, but I love this kind of interaction and banter with the fans. I do too. Uh, there was one too, Luca and Absolutely. a guy courtside. The, the fan was smart. He kept his arms like this, but I will say they were like this far from each other. There was one too where Luca, the fan had the ball, Luca came to like give him the ball, yeah. and the guy just threw it this way. <laughs> <laughs> they can't tee him up. Like, I love great. that. Yeah, I love it. It's good hostile. I would do the same shit if I was a fan. Is there a building that's known to be the most hostile that you guys have, like in your own personal experience, Lou? Boston. I knew it was going to be Boston. I don't even know why. Well, Boston it. just doesn't like black people. They're, they're just racist. racist. Oklahoma City is, is <laughs> Oklahoma. By the Oklahoma, way, Chandler me, defining racism for us was a highlight for me today. Oklahoma City, and to me, I played a uh, playoff series there, and I played a playoff series in Portland. They're both. Oh. They're both like, because they're funny, but they're also, they'll, they won't stop. They'll talk shit. Passion. They know things about you. Like, oh. they, like they cut deep. Oh, they come in with research. I love OKC. I, you know what? The uh, Chicago is underrated. Chicago was underrated for the playoffs. We played Chicago in the playoffs. I ordered pizza anonymously. Don't know how they know it was my pizza, but they taped a picture of Derrick Rose on the pizza box. <laughs> it was it, it was like 4-0 sweet. I didn't eat the pizza, by the way. I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't you can't. trust it. You can't eat the pizza. I, did, I, got I didn't trust it. I got I, food so poisoning one time wow. during the playoffs in Portland. That makes sense, though. You, you would be an easy yeah, target for most like, places. <laughs> Yeah, but like, that's like illegal. It's just like poison to me. <laughs> well, you didn't die. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> when we come back, Grizzlies forward Gigi Jackson joins the show. Duh. Gigi. Get ready to feel old, y'all. Run it all. Oh. Run it back. Yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah. Yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah, there were some good moments over the course of this season. Gigi Jackson joins us now. Um, okay, you were the youngest player in the league. Let's just start there. 19 years old, just turned it in December. Tell me the best part and the worst part of being the youngest guy. Um, the best part, kind of, that's the first thing what everybody says. Like, if you get a bucket or anything, so I feel like that's pretty cool. But the worst part... Um, they didn't really hit me hard with the rookie hazing, oh. but like uh, with Marcus Smart, I had to go pick up some for him. But for the team, I had to pick up the food for the whole team and <laughs> things like that. And D Rose, his oh. bag, I always had to carry his bag for him. So you were by yourself. Yeah, yeah until uh, Trey Jemison came. Until Trey Jemison came, yeah, I had to see you. Got double you got it bad. Oh, that's tough. It's yeah. usually three or four of y'all, so y'all can y'all can share the duties. But mm. being by yourself, <laughs> that's a bad deal. Damn. <laughs> Fair. Um, when guys go out afterwards, what do you do? Do you bother trying to sneak in somewhere or no? Um, I'm to give y'all the real. I definitely try to from uh, <laughs> from, from college. Well, I was I was a young kid in college, but uh, you know, since I stayed at home, they was able to show show me love and all that. But I'm kind of a homebody. But if there is any opportunity or the slightest chance of me getting in, oh, I'm I'm calling everybody for like where y'all at, what y'all doing. I'm trying to get in. He's in the <laughs> NBA, Michelle. He can get into a club. Or Look, race. I'm a he law-abiding citizen, yeah, so I don't know how that works. You pull don't to let a club nobody lie to you. Gigi can get in yeah. any club he wants to, and he's with D Rose and Ja. He well, can that's get fair in. too. That is fair. Okay, you're right, Gigi. Man, look, I was in the, I was in the league when I was 19, um, huh. so I can relate. Shit, weirdly enough, we both were 45th picks in the league, and um, I know for me, my draft process, I, I wasn't I wasn't ready. Like I going to my pre-draft oh. workouts, I took it for granted. I didn't understand how important they were. I was just out of shape, and that's why I slid in the draft. Why did you, Why do you think um, you were able to get to the 45th pick and not be a you know a a first rounder or something like that. T take me through your draft process. Why do you think you went that far? Um, main thing I would say uh, was my attitude in, in college. Um, I never had any regrets in life except for one was when I went live on Instagram and that ruined everything for me. 
And then uh, it would be subtle little things like the team comes in for a huddle, you know, I'd be by myself standing on the side and stuff. So it was just little things like that. And then I was out of shape during my uh, draft workout. So that was really, really bad. But, you know, nonetheless, it all came back together. So. Wait, you're 19 and you had more self-awareness in the last 10 seconds than most people have. Yeah, they so still well have. done. Well done. Sorry, no, Lou. For real. Yeah. No, nah, that's it. That's important to understand that, bro, and, and, and knowing that. And I just want to I want to tell you, I, I appreciate how you approach the game. I've seen clips of you watching veterans and watching other guys warm up how they get prepared for games and you soaking it all in, bro. That's going to that's going to be good for you. The, all those teams that passed on you, you want to you you want to make them feel that you want to make them regret their decision passing <laughs> on you. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's been a couple that I've been able to scratch off the list, but uh, until uh, you know, big you man go. John come back uh, with the rest of our guys, we can really, mm -hmm. we can really win. So. That's gonna be. That's what's up. What was your welcome to the NBA moment? Um, the summer league count. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's part of it. Somewhere on it's somewhere somewhere on ESPN's TikTok account. Um, I can't remember Buddy's name, but if you pause it for a sec, you'll see his knee directly in my back <laughs> with everything above his waist up above me like this on a putback dunk and it was in the big gym in um in vegas it, yeah it was in bad. vegas it yeah jg <laughs> back in march you put up 35 against the warriors hitting seven threes which by the way he's the youngest player to ever hit that sounds seven right. plus threes in an nba game wow what did it feel like doing that against steph clay obviously great shooters and your former aau coach chris what Paul. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> it's all it's always a good time getting to uh play against uh I don't know if I should call him Mr. Paul since we're colleagues now. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, still Mr. Mr. Paul. But uh it, it was fun getting out there. Uh I was scared at first because I, I knew I had to guard uh Curry the entire time. So it's definitely a couple of clips of me getting lost out there, uh, you know, him thinking he's relaxing and he's just taking off somewhere else. But uh but so I felt my shot going in a little bit. And then uh, we, they got into a little scuffle. You know, they knocked over our coach. You know what I'm saying? So I, I had to return with some type of fire back. So, yeah. Mr. That's Paul, awesome. Coach yeah. Paul, wow. I love this so much. Uh, then you put up 31 against, you know, LeBron James. Uh, no big deal, one of mm. your childhood idols. What is that like? I mean, it's just all happening in real time. Um, the, I, I, will t I will tell you the best feeling in the world is when you watch the, uh, the highlights back. And uh, you see the shot going, and you just see everybody on the court from their team just. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They got to get back on defense. Mm -hmm. But uh, still feel surreal to this day. Um, I try not to, you know, watch my highlights all the time, but I definitely still do. Uh, you know, I'm still a kid and all that stuff. You know, we look for highlights, different things like that. Yeah. But it still feels surreal. And uh, I just thank God that the ball was going in that day. Gigi, I'm 35 and retired for three years. I still watch my highlights. He Googles himself, <laughs> still, like every day. I just show it to my <laughs> kids nonstop. I want them to know, that, listen, your dad was the man back in the day. Yeah, they don't believe it. They yeah, still they don't, don't believe it. it. Hey, Gigi, what, was it any back and forth during that game with, with, with you and Brian? Because um, I know you met him during your AAU days. Uh, it was uh, kind of me, like, checking on him. Not, like, in a, like an aggressive way. He drove down the middle in transition. And I definitely snatched the ball from him. But you know, LeBron, they called a foul. <laughs> and then I, I asked him, I was like, you know, I got you on top of your head. And then he started, he started tapping that ball spot a little bit. He said, yeah, you got me, you got, you got me a little bit. But uh, that, that was pretty much about it. Don't bring up the, the ball spot. Nah, so. <laughs> nah, he's you still got, the king. So That's where the crown is to sit. I like that. I've never heard that before, bro. <laughs> I love it. I'll ride with that. Yeah. So you got, you got your LeBron highlight. Um, you got your coach Chris Paul highlight, and I know that's a big one because I coach AAU. I coach AAU girls, so if I ever have a moment where one of my girls is pro and I'm anywhere around, that's going to be a major accomplishment. So that's dope as hell. Who else is on your hit list of idols that you want to <laughs> you want to put on your hit list? Who else you got on there? Um, it's going to be super tough. Uh, uh, Kevin Durant for sure. Okay. Um, Doable. Uh. I've gotten to play Tatum, but uh, that was bad. He he gave us <laughs> he gave us uh, thirty six and, and three quarters. Ooh. I want to say, yeah, it, it was one. It was one of those nights. Uh, but KD, Luca, um, and definitely Kyrie. I, I haven't got to uh, play those. Right. Whatever you do, 
do not call any of them Mr. before the game. Now, <laughs> after the game, in the hallway, yeah. you can show your proper respects. Please do Do it. not call Please them Mr. before the game. They will attack you, I promise you. Because I'd been the first one. If you'd have called me Mr. Williams before we played, oh. I'm on your ass. Uh, full disclosure. <laughs> <don't> <laughs> chicken. He called him Mr. Williams before we went on the air, and Lou is really not feeling it right now. <laughs> just know, that's, my that's my bad. That's my bad again. That's my bad again. Gigi, you also played against Wimby and the Spurs twice this year. What was it like going up against him? Have you ever played someone like him <laughs> that length and that size that can, the shit he can do with the basketball? Um, it only reminds me back, I was in sixth grade. I played for uh, Team USC Unleashed. It was uh, like a big AAU team that was put together here in uh, Columbia. And Damn, um, why are we showing this? We played, right? <laughs> Just because it's nah, a moment. That, that was, that was moment. one of the plays he talked trash to me. But uh, <laughs> we had, uh, we played this Canadian team and they was lying about their ages. So, that was like the only closest thing I got to Wimby until I got to play him. And I will say, this is very, very biased, but he, to me, he's gonna be the greatest player to ever play this game, like in, my opinion. in like my opinion. In my opinion. Why do right. you think so? Yeah, why? What do you, what, tell us some of the intangibles, why do you think so? Uh, Cause I'll be, I was a hater when he came in. I'm like, oh, he's not too <laughs> strong. Well, what does he do against bigger big? He just blows bottom. I said his handle wasn't that crazy. They gonna poke it. He's doing sham guys from the three-point line, ending up at the layup. I said he couldn't shoot that good. He fast break transition, pulling up from volleyball line. So he literally has every. The only thing that can stop him is himself, mm. and um, how complacent he gets, or like how hungry he is for. It. And uh, from from the looks of it, you know those overseas guys, they don't they don't really take things lightly. So he's coming for it all. Nice. Well, talk Does he talk trash yeah. in English or is it in French? That's what I want to know. What does he say? <laughs> It, it, it's definitely yeah, in English, sure but it, it's like it's very light whispers. It, it's so light whispers until like he gets Tim in Duncan one. Style. That's when he'll really hit. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I saw the video. I can't remember who was talking about Tim Duncan, but uh, <laughs> he'll be like, you know, like why why do they keep going up on me? Why are they trying to lay the ball up on me? <laughs> and then he'll yell at one of the teammates like ball, and then he'll really like use his voice. But, uh, yeah. he, he's awesome. fun. he's funny it, to be on the court with, though. Just class, class, class. Yeah, Gigi, so is it true that Giannis pinched you during a game? <laughs> yeah, yes. Right here. What? Right here. What is he on? What? I was, excuse me. What? I gotta check okay. my mama. I gotta check my mama. <laughs> I was we gonna, busting we gonna, his ass. We gonna keep a respectful mama. <laughs> yes. yes. I was busting his <laughs> And uh, I, kept, I kept coming off, like, shooting quick threes. And so, um... When Pat Bell subbed into the game, he was like, nah, nah, you know, I got him, I got him. And I blew by him. So Giannis, they was full denying it. And like, anytime I would move, he would just grab my side and like, squeeze oh, <laughs> so hard. It, it hurt so bad. Is that a thing? He got, he got that from PB. He got that from Pat Bev. Pat Bev used to do that to me in practice. <laughs> really? And I used to get dead serious with him. I'm like, Pat, stop that shit, bro. Stop. Does it leave a he mark? Get, he get it from Pat. Is it hard enough to leave a mark? Yeah, he just, he'll just. <laughs> L yeah. Like if you're taking if the ball out nails. on the side or something, uh. yeah, he'll just clamp it. He'll just clamp into your skin mm -hmm. to get a reaction out of you. I'm not feeling that, yep. and I don't love it. Uh, after you played nah, against Dylan Brooks, you called him a weird player, which I think is <laughs> putting fair. it's putting it lightly. Um, <laughs> what did what makes him weird to you? Yeah, it's fair. It's it's a good description. Why is he weird? Um, I mean, he he's still one of the few players that goes double arm sleeve. You know, <laughs> that's that's kind of. <laughs> That's kind of weird. With the pads, there, but, too. With the pads. Yeah, with, with the, the pads, pads. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, he, it's weird because like, if he's off on one thing, say, like, he can't really finish that that good tonight, for some reason, he is so much better at all the other things that he needs to be good at. But if he's off on those things, like, he's never off on everything, in my opinion. Um, especially defensively, it's, it's very hard to see him take plays off. And um, I've, I've learned a way. I, I use it on the, uh, my, my homies down here when we get to play sometimes. Anytime they go to shoot the ball, I'm either going like slightly tap your elbow right here or like graze it on the side or something like that. Like, he has the weirdest ways of getting you like out of like getting you uncomfortable when you shoot the ball. So, did you ask him really to follow you on Instagram at the free throw line? <laughs> And yes, and he, he, he really looked up at me like this <laughs> and then kept going. Did he follow you? <laughs> Uh, I think he did. Nice. Yeah, I think he did. Then I think it he did. Do you guys, I, I've always wondered that. Do people pay attention, like, who's following? Do you go scroll every once in a while and be like, oh, nice. Okay, so-and-so's following me. 
I do. Uh -huh. For sure. I don't know who else I love how genuine and honest you are, bro. Never change, please. Never. Um, Gigi, in the, final, in the final game of the season, you dropped 44 points on the Denver Nuggets. Was that you were just in the zone? You were feeling it? Tell us about that game, because that was a hell of a game. Uh, yeah, you, you just said it, like, in the flow. I was uh, got going pretty early. And um, really, uh, my shooting coach, Anthony Carter, we were, for some reason, that early morning, I couldn't hit a shot. So we, we literally worked on like having the ball tap my hip and then bringing it up because I usually like wind it up. So we had to just work on keeping it on this side and uh, everything felt warm. I still shot four for like 13 from three, but it still <laughs> felt good to shoot them. You did get but, up 36 um, of them things that game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But a uh, very Touch. surreal moment, but a uh, huge blessing from God nonetheless. And uh, hopefully I can just recreate those, you know, later in the line down my career. Love that. <laughs> Next season, you got, uh, you got Ja returning. Um, you got Desmond Bain returning. Triple J is coming back. How do you fit in a mix with... Um, you know, your top three guys being back in the lineup, how do you think you fit in that mix? Um, attacking closeouts. Uh, if I'm on one, shooting the, the catch and shoot. Because um, I got it from Lou Kennard and somebody else. I call them non-seers. Like, this is not a contest. Like, this is a contest to you. So uh, just being right. able to get my shot off really fast. Definitely corner threes. Uh, kind of like an a a MPJ role but more like dialed okay. down because uh, he can get a shot off on anybody. So, uh, yeah, kind of like that, but more You can down. too. What you mean? <laughs> you can too. It won't be 36 I'm trying, attempts, I'm, I'm trying. but you're going to be able to do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, it's kind of crazy you haven't gotten to play with Ja yet, so I would imagine that's a pretty exciting thing to think about. What, when you were drafted, draft night, did he FaceTime you? Is that a real story? Yes, yeah, like? he was the uh, first person to call me. I got in the car, and uh, he could tell I was a little bit mad, but uh, he was a, uh, you know, uh, South Carolina got a country and say, oh, welcome to the crib, man. You know, so you get up to Memphis, we're going to show up, so you're going to get you here, 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 there. So uh, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. So. Um, we've been, this is a Chandler thing, too, by the way. So there's this debate, and it will never die. It's the whole, who would have more success, NBA players in the NFL or NFL <laughs> players in the NBA? Where do you stand on this topic. Hey, be careful with this one because um, the NFL players, they starting to get sensitive. Yeah, they're, start, yeah, they're starting they, to they, listen. They're, really? they're starting, they get starting to get sensitive. Oh, Before you they, answer, they, G, my they point is, is yeah, Chandler my does, point is, okay, how tall are you? You're six, six, eight, six, six nine? nine. Six, yeah, yeah, six, eight, six, eight, six, nine. And you know how to run, cut, catch, jump, pat. Not discrediting what NFL players are. Now, I don't know if you can take a hit from Fred Warner going up the middle. That's a whole other thing, but I'm saying skill-wise, the skill that NBA players have just of the, that is so far better than the toughness and the injuries that I think would, would struggle with. So I think someone like you, Draymond Green, Anthony Edwards, they could transition just because of the sheer talent if they worked on the other stuff, to me. Basketball, like Micah Parsons, you watch Micah and CJ and Puka <laughs> play in the All-Star Weekend? <laughs> That's the best three Puka that they're putting wasn't out there. Awful. But they, 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 they wouldn't start on University of Cincinnati right now. How are they going to make the NBA? Like, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. So, so, okay. So, you've heard Chandler's All right, so argument. I, it gets me riled up. He every, really and gets me riled up. Now the NFL up. players are getting pissed. I'm like, but we get it. We're soft. We're soft, but you hey, guys can't hey, shoot. Hey, Chandler, let's not, listen, Chandler, let's not get Gigi caught up in our <laughs> viral moments. Let Gigi live, man. They are getting sensitive, it. though. Because soon as he get off of air with us, his Twitter going to be going crazy. <laughs> Let's just go viral we'll on our him. own. We'll Leave Gigi out of it. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> we got um, you, bro. Got uh, you. We've, everyone's talking about how, you know, oh, the superstars aren't in the playoffs right now. Well, personally, I've enjoyed them immensely with or without. So I think this, this young group of guys coming up are so exciting. When you watch these young guys, the ants, the SGAs, what do you see? Who, who's your Mount Rushmore of up-and-comers? I hate to say up-and-comers. I mean, they're here. They're here. Um, Mount Rushmore? How many? How, Four. Um, History is my favorite subject, but I don't know how four, much. Four. Four. We'll give you four. four. You need four. five. Is it? Okay. <laughs> uh, it may be biased, but I gotta go. With my teammate, my point guard, Ja, definitely Ant. Um, it's it's a lot. See, that's where he's dice. I'm, go I'm going. I'm going. Jalen Green. I ain't gonna cap. Okay. He went crazy like the last like two okay. months in the season. He, he did have a great stupid. end of season. Um, you like hoopers. And, uh, yeah. You like flat out hoopers. And, That's just Victor. Oh, yeah, duh. Victor. Yeah. It's almost like and we that, forget. And think about it. He didn't say 
SGA. Like, think that's just how good. That's the, hard. That's, that's I'm how, telling you. Yeah. We're in talent, good hands. The talent is next level. We are in good hands. Man, this has been awesome, Gigi. We appreciate the time. Like Chandler said, never change. But also, Please. never call Please me ma'am again, or we're going to have real oh, problems. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Real> okay. <problem. laughs> just I'm kidding. Right, you're right. polite. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> we appreciate it, man. Enjoy the offseason. Good off luck, Gigi. Yeah, you're yes, awesome. Sir. Thank good you luck. all so much for having me. We'll appreciate take a quick break. It. We'll be back with more Run It Back. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. This was a game that actually happened. Uh, yeah, Cleveland came in and dominated this one. 118 to 94. We got a Ooh. tied series here. Mitchell 29, 8, and 7. Mobley 21, 10, and 5. Tatum had his 25. Brown had 19 points and four rebounds. It, it, the weird thing about this, guys, is it felt exactly like game two of the Celtics Heat series, where this is what happened. The Heat went into Boston. They got hot. They blew them out, blah, blah, blah. Is there anything different that happened last night? What, why is this happening again? Well, they just didn't shoot the ball great last night. Donovan Mitchell went a little berserk there. And Cleveland got a nice balanced attack in their offense last night. They sat down. They defended. They made things a little more difficult for them. They made them make the extra pass. And Boston honestly just didn't make shots. I think this is a game kind of like that Heat series that you just Dang. said. Didn't, things didn't go their way. They didn't make shots. The Boo Birds were out last night at the end of the game for in real? Boston. So I and think this left. is something that... Again, Miami punched them in the mouth in game two of the first series, and they came back and absolutely destroyed them in game three, four, and five. I wouldn't be surpri surprised if that happened again here, but Cleveland's not just going to lay down. They're going to go back to that, that building. It's going to be rocking, and I still think this ends in five, but this was, five. This was at least a big statement game from Cleveland to at least go and get one. No, if it ends in five. Lou, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, it is tied, and this is a series that all of us have just sort of not even cared about at all, full disclosure, um, and here we are. So... Five, six, seven, what do you think? It was, it, yeah, it was good to see Cleveland fight back. I'm, I'm interested in this series now. I thought it was going to be total <laughs> domination on Boston's part. Cleveland's fighting back. They shot the hell out of it last night, got a big win. And, and like Chandler mentioned, that second game going back home, that's a big momentum shifter. And, and Cleveland fan base and what they've been able to do on their home court this year um, has been really good. It's something to admire. And so with a Boston team going in there, trying to get two big wins, it's going to be tough. So this, this, this series has gotten interesting to me. Well, in the immortal words of the commercial, uh, no such thing as playoff Jason Tatum, but I think there is. Because so far, seven games, has not had a 30-point performance yet. Uh, he's only averaging 23, 43% shooting. This feels a little deja vu-ish. What's the problem? Call me crazy. I'm not, I'm not very concerned about it. I think that he's doing all he needs to do right now to get them by. And they've been coasting, and they've been and, – and without – uh, Przingis in the lineup, right. I think he would be a little bit more aggressive, but he hasn't had to be. Jalen Brown's been unbelievable. They've been getting production from elsewhere, so I think they're doing just fine without him being elite, and he still has so much more big, better basketball to play. But, yeah, I look for him to be very, very aggressive in Cleveland in Game huh. 3. They have to get off to a good start, but you want your best player to play the best in the postseason, and he hasn't. So there is a little concern, but I don't think there's anything major. I will there. take that action. On. I don't think he's And Beetle, you know three. what else? Over 30 points, game three, Jason Tatum. Boom, side bets. Go ahead, Lou. I, I want in. I want in. Which side? I'm on Chandler's side. Yeah. Well, take your 30. money, too. He's, cool. he's going to get, he's going to, you, but you know what else, Beetle? What else we got to realize? The stats are in for the year. The stats are done. Yep. Whatever you averaged, whatever you had, that's done. Now you're getting into the now you're getting into the part of the season where guys are doing whatever it takes to win the basketball game. They don't care about stats. They don't care about makes or misses. You're trying to do everything that you possibly can to give your, your team a chance to win the basketball game. Like he's guarding yep. at a high clip. You know, we, we haven't talked about that. How he's been able to defend the basketball and be in help position and making it tough for other guys to, to be able to put. Obviously, the game two is not a great, <laughs> uh, that's not a great, a great example, but what he's been able to do throughout this postseason has been really special that he's been able to do on a defensive end. I feel like he snaps out of it at some point and he gives us one of those big nights. And it's funny, hopefully it's, it's game three, so me and Chandler can be right hopefully in this. Hopefully uh, When, bit, when Boston it. plays bad, we look to them like, what? Maybe it has something to do with Cleveland. Maybe Cleveland just played better last night. They played harder, they made shots. Yeah. They, they literally got good looks. Donovan Mitchell hit some outrageous he kind shots of took over. yesterday. So, uh, again, you can't discredit what Cleveland did. This is the potential that 
we saw in them beginning of the season. This is the potential that we thought yeah. they were going to have all year long. This is the team that we thought was going to be right there. So they have the potential to do this. We're just so used to Celtics being so dominant that when they play bad, it's almost like, oh, what, what could they do differently? Not not that this, well, the Cavs played good. It's what can why what's wrong with Boston? Well, yeah, but Cleveland, well, that was their first road <laughs> win in the playoffs. But secondly, we this is the Boston team that has the best record. We were told they're the best team. They were already had their ticket punched to the finals. They were going to win. There's a reason why we have these expectations. I don't think we're crazy. And we have the same for Denver. And look, look where they are. Well, that's also weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, right now, afterwards, Tatum had something to say about whether or not the Celtics are a super team. I mean, that's the narrative that you might see on TV. The idea that we have a super team. Uh, it's twofold, right? We didn't have the coach of the year. We didn't have the MVP. We only had two All-Stars, so they say we're a super team, but, you know, we didn't get rewarded like we are. Who says they're a super team? I never said they were a super team. Did you say they were a super team? I don't think they're, I don't, listen, I, I, I think they're a very, very, very good team, yes. a super team. I don't think they all came together, signed together in free agency, big three in Miami oh. or Golden State. This isn't a super team. Pretty this good. is actually pretty organically, yeah, this is built from the ground yeah. up. They have really good players. They can defend, they can shoot the ball, but... This isn't a super team. Who said this is, that? This is a super Lou, team. Lou, did you say they were a super team? <clears throat> Who? Shams, let's bring in Shams. <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Bring back in Jeezy Jackson. <laughs> Who said they were a super team? No, it is a, it's weird. I mean, look, I don't even know that his counter argument necessarily would be a successful one, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't look at the Celtics They're team the thing. They're the favorite to win it all, I think, but they're not a super team. Are they still the favorite by Correct. a lot? What is that doing? What are those numbers looking like? That doesn't make you a super team. No, a no. super team is the team that's won championships already. Yeah. You're rolling. Yeah. It's evident. Like they don't. They're not. They're not there. They're still building towards that status. They're a you very good team. They're not a super team. My, what is it again, Conrad? <clears throat> Minus one fifteen, favorites. I would. Not a super I mean, no. Team. Not bad. Yeah. That was a weird quote. It's even money. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back on a Friday. Get things rolled up here on Run It Back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Everything's on the line. Playoffs is life or death. Every game is just so important. The understanding that there is no tomorrow. I dreamed of being an NBA champion. be really all access to because is mm -mm. it I, you know who I want to just see what he does all day Missoula do you yeah I think there's some craziness going on there and I'd like to see it Lou Mr. Williams I'm sorry what uh what would your all access life look like today on a Friday oh. uh on a Friday it's gonna start with a healthy nap right oh. at, oh. directly <laughs> after this so Boring. the cameras aren't going to start rolling until about 2 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> My goodness, sir. Uh, and then we're, I'll probably, then I'm headed to uh, Hoover, Alabama. Okay. For another AAU tournament with my girls. Coach Boy, are our Fridays different. Yeah, what was your Friday look like? <laughs> I got a big golf round today. I got a dinner later at the sushi place. Sure, sure. Go, you know, hang out with my kids. I know Baby Chrome's watching right now. You say hi to Baby Chrome. Hi, Baby Chrome. <laughs> is that how you say hi? Yeah, that's it. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. But no, no reality, no all-access show. No all Even access. the Johnny Manziel doc, that's the floor, Swamp Kings. Nothing is real. Nothing is real. It's all fake. And that is your advice for the weekend. Be safe out there, kids. See you Monday. <laughs> run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it.